bad timing. He, I mean, there's he gave him a free Stanley Cup. They yeah. they allowed the foot to crease. Come on, there's there's a like you. Know, it's not even like they can be like, oh, we didn't know he was going to talk about. It. There's a giant sign like with the logo for the humble Broncos, light it up behind him when he's about to talk about this, and they all just start booing. And then he like then they realize like oh you know we're, maybe we're re- booing at a wrong time. He's like yeah you can boo me after. Then they start cheering like oh yeah we can get him later. It's like come on man like. I, I couldn't believe that. Like that's just ridiculous. That's taken to a whole new level. It's like really, like you now it's like a thing, and it's just so dumb. Like people just boo him all the time. I get it. Whatever. It's Gary Batman. And you want to dig into him and stuff, but you've got like you've got people who don't even know why they're booing him anymore because he's been there for so long. You got guys like probably like my age or even younger booing him, and it's like why are you booing him? Like what has he ever done to your team or whatever in your lifetime that you're like so upset about? I mean, it's just ridiculous. It, it, it's so annoying. And like, yeah, sure, it's all funny games when like it's, it's through something that's not important. But when you start booing him when he's trying to make a tribute to the humble Broncos, it's completely classless. Uh, classless, yes. Um, booing Gary Bettman, I'm in, uh, very much in favor for. I think it's funny, yeah. and I think that he. I think it's funny because he likes to be chirped now. He brings it on. Yeah. Um, but in that instance, I mean, there's just no excuse. It's like yeah. Any no, other no time. timing, yeah. Like, come on. Yeah, any other time. But I mean, I love when I love when Gary gets in on it, and uh, and they and he loves to be chirped now. So it's great. It's good. Uh, it's like one of the few good things about that guy is that he thinks it's funny now. But yeah, man, I'm with you. I thought that was total crap. They, you can't be doing that during a tribute. We all know the humble Bronco situation and what those families have had to endure, and it's it's awful. And with those teammates and those kids that survived have to endure. And then have to be brought in, and they do a tribute, and it's and people are booing. It's like ah, it's just a one time, just a one yeah. time. Well, I mean, last thing I want to talk about because we're getting long here. Uh, the, the only big trade of the draft was a blockbuster uh, between Carolina and the Calgary Flames. Uh, Noah Hannafin and Elias Lindholm go to the Flames. Dougie Hamilton, uh, Michael Ferland, and Adam Fox go back to the Hurricanes. There's there's two layers here I want to dig into. I want to first talk about the trade and what you thought of the trade. And I don't know if you saw today people saying the reason that Dougie Hamilton was traded out of Calgary is be and, and why he was also traded out of Boston is cuz he's like more of an intellect, intellectual introverted guy. He's not like the bro hockey atmosphere like you're hanging out with the boys going to get beers or whatever. And that's why he was traded out. So I want to first talk about what you thought of the trade, though. Um, I thought it was pretty good for both teams. I mean, honestly, yeah. I did. I, I I think that that Furlan's a better player than people are giving him credit for. He's going to provide, a, you know, some good stuff over in Carolina. I, I don't think he's just a throw-in. Um, and Elias Lindholm going over to Calgary. Thanks a lot, Carolina. I appreciate you guys sending over a guy who I think is an absolute stud and uh, putting him in our division yeah. for us to play against a bunch of times this year. So we'll have to see what happens with that. But Dougie Hamilton, man, he's a beast. That guy's yeah. a beast. Best player and, of the trade, yeah. Yeah, he's amazing. And Carolina's going to love that guy. And Noah Hannafin's just not him. He's yeah. just not. He's a step down. So, And not like he's three or four steps down. He's just a step down. He's not at that level. He's a second-pairing guy. He's a three or four, not a one or two. But Dougie Hamilton's going to provide some uh, some great defense over there. For Carolina and hopefully help out um, Scott Darling, who had just an awful season. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe they could turn that around next year. And then now they're going to get uh, Sveshnikov, who they drafted. So they got a lot of good things to look forward to in Carolina. And if they could figure out the Jeff Skinner thing, even better for them. But I think this trade was pretty even. Yeah, I, th- I think so. I mean, like I said, Dougie Hamilton is the best player uh, of, of this trade. And Carolina gets the best player of the deal. They also get Adam Fox, who's a very good prospect, had a good Will Juniors with the U.S. And Michael Fairlin, again, is an underrated guy. He's that he's that Tom Wilson type of guy that you need on a team. He's a third line forward, so and there's nothing wrong with that. And then you get Elias Lindholm, who is marginally better at this point than Michael Fairlin in production wise. I think down the road, Elias Lindholm is like a 50, 60 point guy, maybe seventy. If he does get put on a line with Monaghan and Goodrow, that could be very scary for for any team playing the Pacific Division like the Anaheim Ducks. So that's a little bit worrying. Um, and Noah Hannafin allows 
Calgary to go back to the pairing that was so successful in, in TJ Brody and, and uh, Giordano together. And then you pair Hannafin with, with Travis Hamannick, which I think is the perfect guy to pair him with. It allows him to have a little bit more freedom while Hamannick goes out there and pretty much gives a shit out of anybody trying to take a run at Noah Hannafin. So, I, I, yeah, I think it's a good deal, honestly. I, there's a lot of people on both sides saying this was awful. Or, you know, Calgary fleeced Carolina, or Carolina fleeced Calgary. I think it was more even... Uh, than, than some people give credit for. But the, the last part of this trade I want to talk about uh, was the why Dougie Hamilton was traded thing, talking about how you know there was issues in the dressing room because he isn't a guy that goes out and hangs out with the boys for beers. He's a guy that I think John Shannon it was the one who tweeted out saying that he's more likely he's going to go to a museum other than Moxie's. Cam Robinson brought that up as well. I mean, what's wrong with that? I mean, really, is that why you're going to trade a guy out? Because he doesn't want to go have beers with the boys? He'd rather go and do something else? Yeah, what a nerd. Yeah, I don't want that guy <laughs> on my team. <laughs> I don't. I mean, it wouldn't bug me to the point where I'm going to trade a guy. I mean, you don't have to be. Not everybody is P.K. Subban's personality, right? Um, it's just you're not going to get that with everybody. And even if he's not that way and he just likes to keep to himself and be the quiet guy and let, let his on ice – uh, performances, you know, speak for themselves, and he just wants to do his own thing in the locker room. Who cares? I, I mean, there had to be something else going on in there. It, it just I mean, he had to piss off. It's twice Boston traded him as well, right? And, and he's too young to be traded like that. He's too good. Yeah, I, and I think it honestly is that. And, and we, you love this this quote from Spit and Chicklets, but I was I'm going to pull some up here. So. I've talked to Dougie Hamilton a couple times. Not a big deal. I've talked to him a couple times. Uh, he's been around, <laughs> been around St. Catharines. He's a great guy. I mean, he, he's honestly a great guy. He's a nice guy, but I get it. I mean, he's a little, he's more of an intellectual guy. Doesn't really seem like the typical hockey player. You know what I mean? Like the like I said, the, the bro atmosphere. The the guy who's going out for beers. He's, they're going out to clubs all the time, celebrating. He, he doesn't seem like that type of guy. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I mean, he's been traded twice now. So obviously, there's there's some issue that teams have with him not being that type of guy. There shouldn't be, but obviously there is. I mean, you've been traded out of Boston, the team that drafted you, which was a surprising trade at the time when he got traded to Calgary in the first place. And we're like, well, why are they trading this guy? They're worse for wear from that trade still. Uh, there was rumors that Riley Smith was also a guy who was like that in Boston, was like Dougie Hamilton, and they traded him out as well. And now Calgary doesn't have him in there. I guess who also gets moved out of Florida Riley Smith. So I, maybe some teams just don't like having these guys in. It doesn't work well with the locker room if not everybody is that type of personality. And you've got that one guy who's kind of odd. But I, I, I wouldn't mind it. If I was a GM of the team, I don't see why it's an issue. I mean, let the guy be who he wants to be. I mean, there's got to be something else, man. I feel like there's got there's something we're missing. Something we're not hearing. Just some dirt that's going around. And the people just go, oh, that's the reason why. I feel like it's got to be something else. Like, who cares if a guy doesn't want to go out and party? Whatever, don't hang out with him. Don't invite him. He doesn't care, obviously. He other he'd show up. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree with that. And I mean, what we're running, we're running almost an hour forty now. So you want to want to wrap this up a bit? You got anything else left you want to touch on? No, um, I think that's it for us tonight. Thanks for the, everyone who's tuning in to the show live. I see people in the chat, pretty lively here. Earl, P, Neil, Chase is here. Um, if I missed you, I apologize. But thanks for popping in, Matthew. And uh, your old buddy from Bay Bolts popped in too, so that's awesome. Um, we have a, a bit of, a, of news coming out. I don't want to say it right now because I don't know when it's going to happen, but uh, Eddie and I are uh, going to be working together elsewhere as well, if that doesn't give it away already. Um, so we're going to be doing some things here coming up this summer, uh, probably very soon. So we'll, we'll definitely be blasting it out on this feed, and uh, you guys will have to stay tuned for that. But um, I don't. If I'm if I'm speaking too soon on there on this edit before we wrap, is there a jersey available sometime this summer? Yeah. So I was gonna bring that that up. There there might be. So Cool Hockey obviously is gonna be sponsoring the Forever Mighty Three Stars when we get back in into the season, and they'll be gonna be giving away jerseys each month for that. But there is also the possibility that we might be doing a jersey giveaway this month um, when the third jerseys get released. Uh, they specifically just said in general third jerseys i i'm going to take that as when the ducks third jerseys get released i think that'd be the best time so stay tuned for that that might be something we have a jersey giveaway this summer um, we also will have another show coming up after july 1st 
uh, for free agency. Hopefully the Ducks make some moves there. So that'll probably be our next show. Uh, maybe there'll be some more things to talk about there. We're working on having a couple more guests. Hopefully trying to get another uh, one of the Ducks drafted prospects from this draft on. We're working on, like I said earlier, maybe getting Lisa Dillman and Josh Cooper on if, if that works out with their schedule. and a couple Or maybe Eric Stevens there. now that he's not with the register. Right, yeah. So we're working on some things here. I mean, it all comes down to, to schedule and timing for, for a lot of the people that we end up getting on. Um, again, want to thank Cam Robinson for taking the time. He was on a layover in Seattle and ended an interview with us. And, of course, Isaac Lindstrom, who was celebrating with family after getting drafted, he came on the show today as well. So it was great. I mean, it was a great show. Finally getting back in. We get two interviews. Uh, things kind of developed a little bit quickly, but it's always fun to be back. Exactly. That'll do it for us, guys. Go ahead and check us out on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Twitter's where we're most lively uh, in the off season, so you can check us out there. Um, go give us a review on iTunes. We'd love you forever for it. It helps us out, helps spread the word. And we'll talk to you guys in a couple of weeks. Have a good night.